Hello everyone. Welcome to my gentle introduction to BPF, part one, BPF Trace. Uh, my name is Michael Mullen, and what I want to do today is discuss um, the use of BPF, and specifically the use of BPF Trace to enable you to get going in your first kind of uh, journey into BPF. So what we're going to talk about is I'm going to give you a very brief descript uh, description of BPF. I'm going to touch on what BCC is. Um, we'll then discuss BPF trace and I'll give you some examples on how to use BPF trace. So what is BPF? It's the Berkeley packet filter. Now the name is poor because it's not necessarily about packet filtering anymore, nor is it being done by Berkeley. There's two different types of BPF. There is CBPF and eBPF. CBPF is more in line with packet filtering and it's what Berkeley introduced. Um, the C stands for classic. Um, now an interesting thing about CBPF is it's the BPF type that is used in SecComp, the secure computing um, filtering of system calls in the Linux kernel. eBPF is what is generally um, meant when people say BPF. Uh, the E stands for extended and eBPF can do much more cool stuff than uh, classic BPF. So specifically, um, BPF is a way to run code in the kernel. The code is safe and it's fast, uh, but it's pretty limited in what you're able to do with it. Um, but as the Linux kernel keeps progressing and um, the BPF code in the Linux kernel keeps progressing, uh, those limitations are slowly being removed. Well, slowly isn't a, a good word to say. The, the, the limitations are being removed. Um, so it's an intermediate instruction set, and it's run by uh, a VM in the kernel. Um, raw BPF is basically assembly code, and you can write it as assembly code if you want, but no one wants to do that because it's bad for your sanity. So how do we write BPF? Um, well, one way to write it is with a compiler called BCC. Um, BCC is the BPF compiler collection, and it's more, it's more like a library that you add to your programs in Python or C++, and it allows you to compile um, C-ish code into the BPF um, intermediate assembly-like language. Um, I don't want to touch on um, BCC too much because it's not the focus of this video. Um, BPF trace is a program that will allow you to write some C-ish type scripts for one-liners um, for to do some uh, simple BPF things. And it will be the focus of this video. So what do we need to know before running BPF trace? Well, we need to know where to find info. Um, specifically, to look for info, there's two spots that are important. Uh, the first spot is uh, on your file system, and it's at sys kernel debug tracing events. And the other spot is on the interwebs, and it's at this URL here, this GitHub URL. So let's jump onto the command line and start, uh, start hacking. So, like I said, the first place we want to look for information is on our own file system. So let's take a look at sys kernel debug uh, tracing events. And you'll see that there's a bunch of things to, to look at here. Um, what we're most interested in at the moment is this directory called syscalls. So let's take a look inside of syscalls. And you can see that there's a big long list of what appears to be some system calls. Now there's they're always prefixed with this sys exit and sys enter. But you can see that the, the sys calls that are regularly used are all here. So we've got things like set UID, we've got things like M map. We've got things like open and open at. 
And we also have what we're going to look at today, which is exec VE. So let's dive deeper into this sys enter exec VE. And just, just to, to, for your information, there is a sys exit exec VE. So if we go a little bit deeper and we're going to look at sys enter exec VE. We're going to see that there's a few files here that we want to look at. And specifically, we want to look at this format. So what this is, is it tells us the parameters of the sysenter exec VE thing. Uh, now, what is this thing that I'm talking about? Well, let's write our first BPF trace script. So BPF trace and what we want to do is call BPF trace dash E with our little program script. So BPF trace dash E and our program is going to call um, a trace point for us sys calls and specifically the sys calls is the sys enter exec VE. Now we're going to give it a, a little kind of C like program here and we're going to make our C like program do a printf of, we're going to say uh, our PID is this integer and our COM is this string. PID and COM. Oh, we spelt exec wrong. So you can see we're outputting stuff uh, based on the exec VE system call when an application enters that system call, um, this script is being run. So it's pretty basic right now, but we're getting the PID and we're getting this COM. Now this COM is the name of the program that's um, calling the system call. So I've got a little application here um, called execer. And let's take a look at execer. And this is just going to call the exec um, system call um, based on the who am I uh, application. So we're just execing who am I. Uh, we're not giving it any additional parameters or anything like that. Um, so let's compile this. And let's run it. So here we can see that we caught um, we caught our application execing the who am I call, the who am I application. We also caught that bash seemed to execute something. And what bash executed was our exec um, application. So we're, we're missing some information here because we didn't know, like if we only had this specific line, we wouldn't know what bash was calling. So let's write our script to print out. Actually, uh, before I do that, let's, let's um, describe where I got these, um, param these, these arguments, PID, these variables, PID and COM. I got them from our second um, info page as described in the slides here at GitHub IOVisor BPF trace reference guide. And if you just go to that web page, you'll come here. Um, and then on their table of contents, you'll find variables. So we go to variables and we see that there are some built in variables, PID being one of them. And process ID is actually the thread group identifier of uh, the task that is calling the system call. And com is the name, the process name of uh, the, um, the process calling the system call. Um, so we want to know what our system, the parameters that our system call is being called with, because one of those parameters is who am I? 
slash bin slash who am I? So let's change our script here to also add get the arguments for the file name being called. Now, just for your information, this is going to not run as expected, but we'll take a look at that in a second. So, like I said, it's not gonna run as expected, and it's saying that uh, the new percentage S that we gave um, ex expects a string, but we gave it an integer. Now, where did I get this args file name? I got it from that format file. I got it from right here. But this is a const char star. This, this is a string, isn't it? Well, not exactly. Uh, BPF trace wants us to use um, a function of sorts called str. So let's wrap this in the str function and call it again. And let's run. So you can see that things are happening here. So let's run our, our execer. And we can see here that bash is calling that execer that we're, we're running. But interestingly enough, we don't get the file name from our exec call. We don't get the who am I from our exec call. Now, I don't know precisely why that is, but I've also written a little uh, um, application called fork execer. And this is exactly the same thing as execer, except it does a fork before it um, it calls the exec ve call. So let's compile this up. And give it a run. So here we see that bash is calling our um, f exec, our fork execer function, our fork execer application. And then fork execer is calling who am I? But as we saw before, for some reason, our execer, um, the BPF isn't getting the file name that we're passing via exec VE in the execer. Um, application. And I don't know why that is. And if any of you know why, uh, please leave me a message in the comments uh, because I'd like to know why that is. Now, the next thing that we can do is um, so this sysenter exec VE is actually the entrance of the um, of the, um, the exec VE system call. So it specifically is, jump into the kernel source here. And we're gonna look at, let's see. And we'll wait for my slow internet to catch up with what we wanna do here. Man, it's pretty bad today. All right, we're looking for system syscall, and we're looking for that exec VE system call. So specifically, um, what the enter exec VE is attaching to is this call right here. Or whatever the the whoops, don't move. Whatever the um, the um, the macro system call define three when past the exec ve kind of translates into um, the way system calls are done in the Linux kernel is um, a little bit complex, but 
Basically, the idea is it attaches to here. Um, what it does not do is tell us what happens at this point. Um, so there is, that's what the sys exit exec VE should be about. Now, the wise among you should know that exec VE doesn't actually exit unless you have an error in what you're calling. Um, so um, if I bring up my system code again for execer, you'll notice that when we call execer, No computer. It never returns, um, it never prints out this, we shouldn't see this unless there's an error. So how would I introduce an error here? I'll introduce an error by just going null, gcc, exec, or, oh, exec, call exec. I didn't do my windows very well here. So now we're getting to the, I shouldn't see this because exec VE is, is returning because it has an error. Um, but let's, let's not worry about that, this right now. Um, put my code back to the good state. And Get back here. So the exits, the sys exits are about returning, uh, giving us the return value. So um, we can take a look at sys exit exec ve format, and we'll see that we've got the return value in there. So let's add um, let's add tracing to the sys exit exec ve. So we just, after the, uh, the, per, the open parenthesis and end parenthesis, which adds tracing to here, we're going to do the exact same thing. T sys calls sys exit exec ve printf id and return. and the com. Pid, and this one's going to be args ret, because that's what that is. And the last one is going to be com. Too many arguments, three, two, three supplied to, to expect it. So now we're attaching two probes and we're getting, um, actually let's, let's do a little bit more here. Enter, and then we go all the way back to the exit. All right, so we've got the enter of this 330 PID. Um, the com is this thing. I don't know what that is. Um, but it's calling this, but it's exiting, it's exiting as this. So this application is exiting, when it, when it does the syscall, it's exiting as this. And that's because that's how, like this is a little bit complicated because exec VE should not be returning unless there's an error and there is no error here. Um, but I guess BPF trace is smart enough to understand that we're, we want that exit. So it, so what, what happens on the exec system call is that your application calls exec and what exec does is it, um, changes your task structure from what you just, um, were into what you're executing. And that's why you usually fork before you exec, because you don't want to get rid of everything. You, uh, what fork does is it. Um, it clones your um, your task, and then you call exec on that clone in your child process. Um, 
But anyways, we're not getting into all the details about how to to do multi-process um, application programming. We're getting into how to do BPF. So, uh, right. Um, what we're coming in as is not what we're exiting as, and that's because that's how exec works. Um, so let's run our... So be before we get too deep here, this this specific line is getting pretty detailed. Um, it kind of gets annoying if we've got a bug. Let's, let's say like back at the start of uh, our script, I spelled exec wrong, and I spelled exec wrong twice. So this gets kind of annoying. So what you can do is you can make a little script. We can change this stuff into a little script and get BPF trace to call that script rather than calling what's on the command line. So let's copy this stuff. And let's open a little script called BPF. And we don't want to do it as the root user. Let's open the script called BPF tutorial, BPF code.bpf. And let's paste what we just did into it. And put these on new lines. Save it. And then let's just run BPF trace, giving that BPF code.bpf as the parameters. Oh, right. We've got the, the spelling wrong, so it's easier in a text editor to, to jump in and fix the code up. All right, so we're rocking and rolling. And let's run our exec call. So it runs just like it used to. Um, Bash is calling execer. Exec is exiting, even though we know that that's not how it should go. Um, and then exec is calling who am I? Or who am I is exiting, even though we know that that's not how exec works. And let's run our fork and exec call. So this is a little bit better because we get to see that exec is calling the, the who am I. All right. So uh, what else can we do here? Well, let's let's uh, let's let's get a little bit more complex with uh, our system calls. Let's let's take a look at um, the system call for sys enter mmap. And when we do an mmap call, let's put out the PID. again so you can see mmap is called a lot and this is all the same process so what process is calling mmap so much well let's print out the comp it seems to be this tpm Abermed. Debus send is doing a whole lot of mmaps. Mmap is is uh, is what happens uh, a lot of the time when you're doing a malloc. So that's why uh, you see a lot of mmaps. Uh, anyways, uh, I hope this is enough to get you um, interested in doing some BPF code. Um, if you would like to see more detailed. Uh, code. If you want to see uh, diving into using the BCC compiler in Python or in C++, uh, leave me a comment and uh, gently press the like button on the video below. Uh, thank you very much for watching and have a good, good evening.